Hey guys. So back, maybe I think it's over a month ago now, I did a video on the thyroid, thyroid gland and I talked about how people often get eating disorders and hyperthyroidism confused because both have quite similar um, symptoms uh, but obviously the thyroid is a medically treatable option whereas eating disorders are psychiatric illnesses. And a few of the comments was talking about how they, they thought this video was going to be on something else. It was going to be on how the thyroid relates to eating disorders and what actually happens to the thyroid when you have eating disorders. And yes, yeah, so, sorry about that. I, I completely um, got the wrong end of the stick when you asked me to do it. So, I, I mean, I did. I, I have since then done a bit of looking into exactly what happens to the thyroid gland and the general endocrine or hormonal changes that happen when you have an eating disorder. And that in itself can be a series of videos because there's so much that goes on when you stop eating or when you you know or when you just change your eating habits completely it is it's absolutely incredible but in relation to the thyroid gland I thought that I you know I'd give you a bit of an update on it so when uh the th the thyroid is very much affected by uh you consuming calories and the the general state of the body whether it be if there's an infection going on or if there's some sort of inflammation happening. And what happens, you know, when, when, when you're in hospital even, people who are having surgeries or just generally feeling unwell, the thyroid seems to be very much affected by this. And it, there's just so many interactions that goes on. The more I read, the more, you know, the, 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 there is to read. It, it, there's so much. But in relation to eating disorders, from what I've seen, one of two things can happen. And the first thing is something called euthyroid sick syndrome. So what exactly does that mean? Well, fr from the Latin, eu, um, it's spelled eu, uh, means normal. And thyroid, thyroid gland. Um, and in Latin, I think it means shield, uh, because the thyroid looks like a shield. So it means normal thyroid, yet you're sick. And when it, when it, when, it, when I say yet yeah, you're sick, it it's just the laboratory shows that there's something going on, and what happens is it's it's quite strange. When you are ill, uh, you stop a, a process happening. There are two kinds of thyroid hormones, and I I didn't I don't think I spoke about this in the previous video, but there are two kinds made by the thyroid gland. And the first is called T3, and the second is called T4. In fact, I, I do think that I did speak about this, but I'll just recap. So T4 is when two molecules of tyrosine, which is an amino acid, uh, with two groups of uh, an iodine on it, come together. So you have four iodines, hence T4. Now, T3 is the same, but it's when ha tyrosine with two iodines and tyrosine with one iodine come together to make T3. So why 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 is it like that? Well, T3 is the active compound. It's the one that it's the one that uh, binds to the receptor in your cells and causes all the changes to happen. T4 is essentially the storage in your blood. T3 is rapidly broken down by the liver and by other tissues. So it's it's called a half life. It's what the time it takes for the uh, amount to go down by half. It's very short, so it goes away very quickly. Whereas T4 has got a much longer half life, so it can stay in the blood for longer. So when you need T3, a process of deiodination, whereby one of the iodines is taken off, happens, and this produces T3. So. What happens in euthyroid sick syndrome is this, this deiodination process slows down for some reason. And what this essentially means is that you have less of the active compound, T3. And in effect, this can make you hypothyroid, but it doesn't really happen. Uh, you don't really notice it uh, from what I've seen. It tends to be completely asymptomatic. That is, that there are no symptoms. And yeah, if, I mean, if you look at the lab values, all you see is that there's a low T3 and a low T4. So yeah, that's essentially what happens. 
And now on to the actual subject of hypothyroidism. Uh, the, the, from what I've seen, the reason why this happens is because you're so malnourished that, you know, you need two, two things to make the uh, thyroid hormone. You need the tyrosine and you need the iodine. If you don't have these two things, um, because you're so malnourished, you, be, you can become hypothyroid. So I think that's, that, that's the general way that it can happen. Uh, and, you know, when you are, when people get pregnant, they, they, can, they can, can become hypothyroid quite easily uh, because the the baby inside of them is using so much so yeah what happens when you're hypothyroid well i said about i said about this in my previous video i always have mnemonics ready so there there is a mnemonic that i know for hypothyroidism and it's a b c d hovs so what this stands for is appetite your appetite can go down and although it's although your appetite goes down weirdly uh your weight can increase and the reason for this is because your metabolic rate goes down and this does happen in eating disorders when you restrict and restrict and restrict uh, your metabolic rate goes down because your body's like well there's no point in me having a high metabolic rate because I'm not getting anything I'm not getting anything to fuel this and I don't think this is because of any changes in the thyroid this is just an adaptive function that happens to protect yourself from breaking down your own bodily tissues and the second thing B well, there are many things that this can stand for, but the one that I use is beta adrenal receptors, which are a, a subclass of receptors to which epinephrine and norepinephrine binds to. And when this happens, it increases your heart rate, it increases the amount that's going around your body. Um, so when you have a, uh, a low thyroid, um, essentially you have fewer beta receptors and they are less sensitive to the epinephrine that is around. So what this can, what this can cause is you to develop a very low heart rate, a low blood pressure. And again, this is seen in eating disorders. But again, I don't think this is related to the thyroid. This is more related to your body just not being able to do um, do what it should. The second, the third thing, C. This stands for cold intolerance. Now I said about this in the the other video. Um, whereby people with hyperthyroidism can become heat intolerant. The opposite happens in hypothyroidism. They can't stand cold temperatures. And again, this is what you see in eating disorders. And perhaps uh, this could be related to the thyroid. But again, this is more likely related to the fact that you've got such a low body fat index that you have nothing to keep you warm. The fourth thing, D, that stands for depression. Uh, people with hypothyroidism can become very depressed, very tired and just very, generally very sluggish. The, the next thing, H, that stands for hair and skin. People with hypothyroidism can get very brittle hair and their skin can become very dry. Their skin can become very flaky. And, you know, you, you do see this, but it, it tends to take a while to happen. O, uh, now this stands for um, the uh, ovulation. And with women, it just causes changes in their periods, changes in their menstrual cycle. So, yeah, the, the women are very complicated. <laughs> the hormones in women are just so complicated to learn about, and it is very, very interesting to learn about. But, the, uh, yes, people with eating disorders, they can either have very irregular periods or their periods can stop altogether. Now, this is... Again, something that is completely different, and I can make a video on this if you want me to. But uh, for now, in terms of hypothyroidism, yes, your periods can change, uh, and yes, your periods can stop. Uh, the V, now, this stands for voice changes, and people with hypothyroidism, their voice can become very hoarse and very uh, crackly. It, it's, it's quite weird, and this is thought to be due to changes in the, um, the connective tissue uh, and this can happen all over your body, it's called myxedema and this can happen in your throat and cause you to develop a, a bit of a ho hoarse voice. S, finally, this stands for sleepy um, and people with hypothyroidism can get very sleepy very easily. So yeah, um, I hope this does clear a few things up.
because, yeah, I didn't really know what you wanted me to talk about. But now I should have covered all my bases, and I hope that you have found this informative. Uh, the thyroid is very interesting to learn about, and if you want me to put you in the, in the direction of other things that you might want to talk about or just read about, please feel free to let me know, and I'll do my best to find you things to, to read about. If you have any other questions, please feel free to let me know. But for now, thanks for watching.